G'day everybody and welcome to episode 10 and today we're going to be discussing uh, property inspections and why you should get one whether you're buying your own house or whether you're actually just buying an investment property for your use down the track. Um, we're going to be crossing live in a very short time frame to Damien Russell who works at DJ Russell and Son which is a family company I'll let him tell you about that a little bit further down the track. Um, and he's going to he's coming to us to be able to speak in detail about a long period of experience that he's had with that. So as always, just remember to make sure that if you have questions that you ask those questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question, as we as we know. I'm here tonight on my own. Tony Vidray has taken a, a uh, taken a better offer, so he says. So anyway, we'll cover that down the track. Um, but first of all, um, I'd like to hand over to uh, Damien Russell from DJ Russell and Son, and here he is. Hey, How are you all? Yeah, very well, mate. Very well. It's good to actually finally physically meet you. When I say physically, visually miss you, I should say, because um, we've done a lot of work with each other, Damien, and and uh, here we are putting eyes on each other, you know, now, so which is good. And we should have t both taken up modelling, I think. So, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, just to, just for the for the viewers out there, what is um, who how did DJ Russell and Sons come about, and why would people choose you over other building inspectors or other other individuals or other companies? Mm -hmm, great question, um, Roger. I've been in the building and construction industry now for thirty five years. Um, wow. I initially started um, in design, um, working for an engineering firm. Um, back in the days when it was engineers that were doing building inspections and not builders. Um, and over that period of time, I've, I've worked for uh, many large builders. Um, mm. and, and, and in that time, experience gained, um, education, qualifications, licensing, etc., etc., mm. um, is where I find myself today um, as an independent building inspector. So, and, and the purpose or the reason behind why I do what I do. Um, is to assist um, others. So, you know, the general population who doesn't understand the building game, um, mm. or particularly the ins and outs of, of what's acceptable and, and what's not. Um, and, and for me, that's, you know, the essence of what I do and why I do what I do. It's to help other people um, to get what it is that they're, they're paying for, I suppose, mm. or in the, in the, in the, instance where they're looking to buy an existing property that they know what they're getting themselves into before it's too late. And and, and uh, Damien, did, is it something that's been in the family for a while? Uh, yes, so um, uh, I had worked for my dad. Um, he, was yep. the, he was the J in the DJ Russell. Okay. He's retired. Um, yeah. And so I was the original son and, and now my son, he's uh, He's uh, looking to step off on his own into electrical engineering. So, oh well, wow. it'll be broadening the our horizons. So, the sixty-four million dollar question is: Why should I do an independent building report on my investment property? What can you give us a rundown on the best answer for that? Um, well, independent, I, I suppose, is 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 it? Um, you know. Um, we're not aligned with any builders. It's um, completely independent. It's non-bias. Um, mm. We're not certainly out favouring um, anybody um, in anything they do. Um, and it's a second set of eyes. It's you know, we're out to we're looking. We're seeing things that you wouldn't normally look for. Yeah. Um, and um, the, the peace of mind that that comes with that. So, I'm um, in the long run, and I often have these conversations. Um, with my clients in front of the builders as the devil's advocate. Um, <laughs> it's in everybody's best interest um, to have that independent set of eyes. Um, saves a lot of arguments down the track. Um, and, and at the same time, qualifying the reasons why some things are done the way they are and, and what it is um, as the investor, um, what it is we should be accepting and what we shouldn't be accepting. Sure. Uh, mate, and so what, what do they actually cover, like just without like the, the 50 page answer, what, what, what does a building and pest cover, inspection cover? Okay, well, um, great question, Roger. There's so many different types of inspections that we perform um, mm. and 
whilst the building is at the core, um, yeah. the aspects of what we're looking for would vary. Um, okay. So in a, in a, in a pre-purchase situation, um, looking to assist the buyer with buying a house and knowing what they're, they're getting themselves into, um, mm. you know, we're looking for high associated cost of repair items. We're looking for safety concerns. We're looking for mm. um, ongoing maintenance. You know, um, and the reports will itemise those, um, you know, highest priority to the lowest priority. So you, you've got a really good picture of where I need to start um, and what's the hidden costs. What, what, you know, 12 months down the track, what am I going to be hit with? That, for, yeah. um, that in the beginning, you wouldn't have no idea. Um, mm. And then we'll go to a PC scenario, a practical completion inspection. So a brand new house, a handover inspection, a lot of people refer them to. Um, we're looking at the, the standard of workmanship, the tolerances um, that have gone into the build, um, how things have finished, have they been finished correctly, um, and the difference, I suppose, between what I do and, and what my competitors do um, is that I actually take along um, all the variations that have happened along the way and ensure that those variations have been completed. Um, so if you've you know, requested USB PowerPoints, that, that they're there. If you've requested, mm. um, you know, a, a change in a layout or a bathroom, that those things have been completed as per your expectations. A lot of investors mm. are interstate. They won't get there to see it. Yeah. Um, and um, quite often things will get missed. If, if we're just there to look at how things have been finished, we, we miss the bigger picture. Yeah, fair enough. Mate, where, where are you, I just made me think of something else. Now, where are you actually uh, having this Zoom session from? Where, where are you located? Um, so my office is in Springfield Lakes. Um, I'm a resident in Springfield Lakes um, in yeah. Queensland. So that's a suburb of Ipswich. Yeah. Um, Springfield Lakes is a, a booming sort of um, development, a land lease um, development. Um, yeah. We're probably, I'd say at the 15 years, that Springfield Lakes has been growing, we're probably only about 40% of the way there. So there's lots wow. of development in the suburb, um, lots of brand new builds, lots of land being cleared constantly. Spring Mountain um, is the most recent one, um, and mm. White Rock has has, um, has just started advertising. Okay, mate. So well, okay, I don't get a building report or an independent building report. What are some of the problems that you've seen over time from people that haven't that you've been called in at the eleventh hour? Um, so they've they've taken handover of the of the home without having an independent building inspector come and have yep. a look. Um, yep. You know the particular um, the area of most concern is in, in and around wet areas, so bathrooms, kitchens, laundries, mm. um, finishing of tiles. Um, Things have been sealed correctly, um, mm. holes and grout. Um, um, so if you didn't know where you were looking, um, quite often they're missed. Uh, um, anything to do with water is always going to be a high risk. So mould, um, second only to things like asbestos with res respiratory issues. Um, mm. But then, you know, um, not as, as, I suppose, um, as expensive as a bathroom. Down to simple things like the painting of tops and bottoms of doors. Um, yeah. Man manufacturer's warranty is two years on a door. If in, in two and a half years it's all, all warped and falling apart and delaminating, and they come out and go, well, it hasn't been painted top or bottom. Uh, mm. Warranty void. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, and so what's the worst case you've seen? What's the, um, what's the most expensive thing that you've seen go wrong? It would be. Um, Leaks in a bathroom, so yeah. you know, water getting in behind tiles, coming through underneath bottom plates, leaking into bedrooms. Um, from a perspective of uh, you know water ingress, um, particularly in Queensland, um, mm. the compulsory warranty insurance that the builders take out um, extends to six years and six months when it comes to water ingress. So th there is a, a there is that safety net there. But it's mm. capturing that. It's diagnosing that that's what the issue is. Yeah. Um, and quite often, um, 
I've been into several places where they've had have had water stains or, or, or mould growth for quite some time and had no idea what the cause was. So yeah, uh, okay, uh, here you go. And it's not until we start seeing you know um, major movement, um, cracks starting to appear, doors not closing properly, um, mm. that you know all of a sudden we're thinking what's going on? Maybe we need to have someone come and have a look. Yeah, and that's when you get there. Um, so, okay, I've got some plans, I've got contracts. Of The builders said he's going to go and do an inspection report at practical completion as well. Mm-hmm. Why should I go and get yours as done at the same time? Like that, And that sometimes can be an independent company that gets called then. Why, why would I choose you then in conjunction or outside of what the builders recommended the, the owner yeah, purchase? Yeah. Well, look, there are a lot of builders out there that have a, a, a quality um, assurance, I suppose, agreement in place with a, a second party provider. Um, and as I mentioned before, um, a lot of them tend to be sort of just looking at the standard things. They're not going above and beyond um, something that I've, I've noticed. Um, um, particularly in the last eight, nine years here doing inspections in, in the lakes, is things yeah. that I've been doing for a long time um, have only just recently in the last two years started to become the norm. Um, okay. sanding, sanding of floor tiles and, and uh, looking under doors and the tops of doors and, and yeah. um, inspecting um, shower wall junctions and things like that. Um, again, though, it, it's independent. So I have no... Um, relationship at all with the builder where a lot of yeah, these other important. guys are doing it on a constant basis. Um, mm. The amount of hours I show up to where these guys have got their own set of keys um, and just let themselves in. Um, yeah. it's, is that independent? Um, Jobs for the boys sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so where does the report go once you do a report? Okay. Um, my report is prepared for my client. So um, uh, every engagement commences with, an, with a written agreement. Um, the written agreement clearly says in there that um, my report is prepared for my client and my client only, um, who mm. they choose to share that with and where it goes once they've received it is up to them. Um, yeah. So I will only, only time I'll ever pass it on to somebody else is at the direction of my client. So if my client says, can you please share that to the builder? Um, yeah. I will do that, but only once they've received it and they've had a read of it and they're okay with its content, um, and then I'll share it with whoever they wish that I'll share it with. Sure. What about, um, so we, we obviously a practical completion on, on a brand new build is, is important to do mm-hmm. an inspection there to make sure everything's there, make sure all the inclusions are in, but what about... Um, how long do you sort of wait and what's important? Is it important to go back and check that everything that you've come up with on the first report has actually gone and been fixed? Totally, totally. So the service I provide includes a follow-up inspection. Um, as far as I'm aware, there aren't any other inspectors providing the same service, so it's all included mm. in that initial fee. There's no yep. additional return fee. Um, for peace of mind, particularly when it becomes to those high risk areas, yep. um, to going back and ensuring that they've been c- completed properly, and look, um, you know, nine times out of ten, someone enters the room, they pull all the blue dots off the wall, yeah. um, stand there and go, uh, I think I got most of them. And yeah. we do quite regularly find items that need to be addressed again when we return yeah. for that second inspection. Yeah, okay. So what, what sort of things uh, prevent a thorough property inspection being carried out, even in a brand new build? In the PC, so in a, in a practical completion or a handover. Um, oh, I, in a handover scenario, I guess, more to the yeah. point, yeah. Yeah, would, would um, site works, delays on site, weather, ink, those types of things. Um, not mm-hmm. being able to move around the outside of a building. Um, there are a lot of builders who these days, because of um, you know, costs associated with materials on site, will leave a majority of the high expense items till the day of handover. Um, and so I typically encourage my clients to have time my second inspection um, either with their property manager 
um, yeah. so that we, we can ensure that everything is there. And at mm. least then the property manager is left with a clearer picture of any little items that may need to be addressed. Um, understanding most of those things, um, the requirements in Queensland is that they are addressed within that first 12 months. Sure, okay. Yeah, sometimes they are you, can it vary from three months to 12 months, can't it? Yeah, yes, yeah. Look, and, you know, at the moment with, I, know, I say there's a lot of people who ring me and they have, might have questions, they've taken hand over, they've moved in, it's not too late. Yeah. It's, it's never too late to get that inspection done. In, in that first 12 months, um, it's never too late. But the longer we leave it, um, the, worse it is, yeah. the, the, the more things that we would have to go, well, um, was that because of a fridge getting moved up the hallway um, or chairs getting pushed against the wall, something heavy was dropped on the floor. Um, yeah. So there's, we've got to find that balance. But the closer we get to that handover period to do the inspection, you might have moved in, you've been there a week, um, mm. now's the time. But if it's three months later, um, we're going to muddy water. Dr dramatically reduce the amount of things we're going to look at. Yeah. Okay. So, who does it protect? Like, what? What? Who can it protect against? In other words, the different parties. Who are the parties that you can protect yourself against on an investment yeah. property? Let's say yeah. specifically. Look, I think it benefits both parties um, having an independent building inspector come along. Um, Understanding how we identify defects, um, I suppose, yep. is, is one of the biggest hurdles for my clients to understand. Um, there, there's a set of rules, there's a set of guidelines that we must follow um, yeah, yeah. to give everybody the fairest of opportunities to deliver a quality product. Everything's mm. made by human hands. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, if, say, we do have a water situation and we do have moisture ingress, um, it's only going to cost the builder down the track if within that six years and six months, all of a sudden we've got mould growing through showers and, and mm. tiles popping off walls. Um, if we could identify that issue in the beginning, well then um, both parties have walked away with a win. We, we so are, um, it, yeah, go on. Sorry, man. It serves, it serves, it serves everybody. Um, but I suppose um, you know, you, you're not having to chase the builder when you discover something's gone wrong. Um, down the track because we've addressed that early. We had a tiler do our bathroom, a new bathroom, renovated bathroom, and one time we looked in, we looked in the, in the corner of the bedroom, and there was some toadstools growing. So we figured it probably wasn't sealed well, and the uh, tiler put it on himself to do the waterproofing as well. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah. he used a cheap product and didn't do it properly, so it had, he had to go and pay then for somebody else to do it. So. He wasn't happy, but I guarantee we weren't going to be using recommending to anybody else. So. No. And what how long is it? The number one yeah. defect. Sorry, Roger. Yeah, yeah, you're right. How, how long does it? How long does an inspection take for people out there might who may want to get an inspection done? Look, I I allow two hours to do a PC or a handover inspection. Okay. Um, that said, um, I have shown up to some sites and have been there longer than that. Um, but also in the same time, if I show up and I believe that a property is not PC, I'll say to the builder, hey, listen, this isn't ready for me. Um, mm. And you need to ensure that your trades have had enough time. Give me a call back when you're ready. But two mm. hours is the standard standard time frame um, to, to wander through a house, to inspect it properly, to identify all the defects, to then come back, to photograph them, um, to itemise them in a report and have mm. a detailed report um, ready to hand over at the end. Um, yeah. So yeah, that two hours on site, and then, you know, then back here in the office, and you know, another hour and a half to make sure everything's squeaky clean. Now, I've seen your reports. I'm I'm sure that you were born on Krypton because you can see things that I certainly can't. So. Uh, <laughs> So what, what about what what in so now let's put you on the other side of the fence. You're now uh, an investor and you you bought a property and it's coming up to practical completion side. We you know, might have just done a um, the stage four. What 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 would what sort of inspections would you get and when would you request them? If it were you on the other side of the fence as the purchaser. Um. 
a difficult question to answer because I understand how the process works. Um, I get calls every second day from clients asking me to do a stage two framing inspection or a slab inspection. Um, mm. How that works in Queensland, um, it's very heavily controlled and policed by private certifiers. Um, mm. Almost impossible to get on the list of what they consider a, a competent person. Um, yep. I, I have worked in the past very closely with some certifiers and have done um, that typically that type of work. Um, and, and look, and I understand from a, from a, a investor's point of view that they want to know that every step of the way. Um, Things are being captured, done correctly, being policed. Mm. Um, um, so, you know, when it comes to that PC stage, um, and I've received a letter from the builder or an email saying we're at PC, here's our final invoice, pay up now. Yeah. Um, I'd want to start making those calls. I want to find that independent inspector um, who can go and have a look through the building with me um, or alone, um, and just ensure that everything is okay before either I, I pay that final invoice mm. um, or accept the keys um, and know that everything's okay. How, um, how much does an inspection cost to do like a, a pre and post? Okay, so as I was um, mentioning, my uh, initial PC fee in includes um, the return inspection. Um, so depending on, on location here in the lakes, I, I remove our travel component from our fees. Yeah. Um, but the, the typically that $480 mark for a PC inspection. Um, okay. Then depending on location and, and maybe some additional requirements or requests on myself that may impact on time, um, those things may or may not be taken into consideration. Um, yeah, fair enough. So inspections do vary depending on the type. Um, a pre-purchase inspection at the moment for a pre-purchase building inspection the general market is around the, the sort of 320 340 dollar mark mm. um, you throw termites inspection in on that and fees start going up um, mm. but you know all the way up to a, a dilapidation report would be the most expensive um, product that we sell um, yeah. and so a, a dilapidation report um, is basically a condition report, but we're looking at every single crack. We, we, we're magnifying glasses out. We're looking for every single possible defect, no matter how minor. Um, and the purpose of a dilapidation report, there may be a huge development going on next door. The jackhammers are out there. They're, they're baking, breaking rocks. And yeah. that kind of disturbance to the foundations and soil um, will transfer into your building. Yeah. Um, a lot of councils will request that on major developments like that, if they're shoring a property next door, that the builder has a dilapidation report done on the house before they start. Um, mm. And at the end, if something goes wrong, well, we've got a line in the sand. Because quite Gee. often, um, you know, it's easy to say, well, that wasn't there beforehand, but let's, let's have someone document that um, and ensure that at the end of the day, it's either as it was or something's gone wrong. Mate, um, how many different types of reports are there? You mentioned like a, I know two pest inspections, building inspections. What other ones yeah. have done? You mentioned a dilapidation report, which is the first time yeah, I've heard of one a, of those. So. Dilapidation. Um, so uh, of the different reports that I provide, um, is a general maintenance inspection. Um, so might do a lot of those on, on rental properties. Um, we do a, we offer a, a pre-sale inspection, so uh, okay. a vendor looking to put the house on the market. Um, it's one thing to go in there and chuck some white paint on and put some flowers around the room to make it look nice, um, but if you know the floor's full of drummy tiles and the bathroom's leaking, well, be prepared to have someone wanting to negotiate. You know, more, buy more flowers. No. Yeah, no, won't work. <laughs> Doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, there's pre-sale, there's maintenance, there's condition reports, um, renovation, post-renovation, pre-renovation. Um, there's just recently been a, a terrible storm um, that came through Springfield Lakes. And mm, I heard. I think reports the other day was 143 
million dollars to date wow. has been handed out on repairs. Um, Did you get hit and personally? So or? I lost one tile. I was very, very lucky. Wow. Um, but there's a lot of people that have had some work done that you just look at and you shake your head. Um, and so doing investigation um, inspections on those on completed, so it's basically a practical completion. Um, mm. Insurance companies wanting their clients to sign off that the work's been completed. Um, yep. And we get up inside roof spaces, we find them full of broken tiles, we find no back blocking on plasterboard ceilings, um, wow. just poor quality work. Um, and in the end, um, the next rain comes through and we've got leaking roofs again and it, the process starts all over. Yeah, that was uh, horrific. Uh, luckily, a lot of the clients that we have uh, on the other side of Angelica Avenue over in Spring Mountain and that wasn't hit at all. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, that, it caused different problems for us with tenants, yes. etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, so. It was very hit and miss. Um, a lot of people were lucky, but little pockets. Um, you know, I drove through the following week, and you'd think that the Green Bank Army Range, which is a live firing range, yeah, um, only a couple hundred meters away, you'd think they'd turn their guns on Springfield and let them go. Oh, it, wow. was, it was it was devastating. Um, you have to. I'd love to send us some photos because I haven't actually seen them. Yes. So. I'd, I'm happy to share them with you. How's it with no roofs, no ceilings, everything gone? Mm. Wow. Yeah. Mate, um, we, we might um, just. Have you got anything else that you wanted to sort of add, um, Damien, or that I haven't sort of asked um, you, or get, get common questions that you get up and asked? And... No, we, we, we've covered a lot there. Um, mm. I suppose understanding um, building and construction in each state is going to be a little bit different. Um, and Queensland's probably one of the most heavily policed states um, mm. with regards to regulations, um, state legislation, state regulations with um, how things are performed and who can perform them. Yeah. Um, uh, understanding that... Um, you know, every process along the way is scrutinised. Um, yeah. And if someone's not signing it off, at the end you won't get your Form 21, which is your habitability certificate, you can't move in. Yeah. Um, so the process is quite heavily controlled. Least, yeah. um, That's a good thing, though. It is a good thing. It is, sometimes it gets in the way. Uh, and, and as before with clients ringing me and saying, can you come and do a frame inspection? Um, it's, it's gaining that permission and having that authority, um, which yeah. at this point in Queensland, the only person who has that authority are the certifiers. Yeah. Um, so, it, and it's just working in with those guys to ensuring the best possible outcome. All right, well, we might, um, we might uh, yeah, thanks for that, mate. That, that was really good tonight, really very informative. You know, way more than I thought you knew, and I knew you thought you knew a lot, so. Um, <laughs> thanks, Roger. Um, yeah. Take it as a compliment, Damien. So, yeah, so, mate, it's um, yeah, been great. We're just going to go out to the viewers now. There's been some questions coming, so I just wanted mm -hmm. to see if we could ask um, you some of those questions. So, 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 should I get a property inspection if I'm buying a new property? Doesn't it come with a warranty? That's Shane from Medowie has asked that question, which is a local suburb here in um, Newcastle. Yes, so... Um in Queensland, um, you have the, the mandatory um, homeowner's warranty, which builders must pay on the owner's behalf. Um, yeah. You won't get building approval in Queensland unless the builder has done that, and that's all submitted with their application documents. Yeah. So there's a standard 12-month builder's warranty, which covers minor defects. So yeah. it might be, um, you know, mitres are separating on either cornices or architraves around doors. Um, um, those items or elements um, in accordance with that warranty um, do need to be rectified within 12 months. Um, understanding though that as soon as that 12 month date from handover hits, the rules change. A lot of that's off the table. Um, um, and you know, cracks can be millimetres wide um, and wow. you're, out, you're outside that builder's warranty period. Um, so yes, there is a warranty in place, mm. um, so you know, uh, it would be 
in your best interest before that warranty expires to have an you independent done, building yeah. inspector come along and do a warranty yeah. inspection. I so we go through and we're looking for those yeah. we're looking for those elements that we know in that first twelve months are going to shift, are going to move. Understand that yeah. the house is this enormous five hundred ton beast that mm. breathes when the wind blows, um, that yeah. moves when the ground gets wet, um, and you know things happen. Um, cracks will appear, doors will become tight, um, all those types of things. And they're those elements we need to catch yeah. in that 11 months and three weeks and seven but days what, before. What about the, I know in, in New South Wales, the um, time for a, a bricks and mortar type uh, warranty is, is six years. What, what is Queensland's numbers for that warranty? Um, yeah, so the the structural component, the structural side of the building, Correct. is yep. is is the same. It's six years and six, six years, months. Six years, okay. Yeah. yeah, six years, six so months. So if all the so if all of a sudden you know giant cracks start appearing in the brickwork on the outside, and possibly we're now talking about underpinning, yes, it's a six years. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, let me just see. Okay, we've got Michael from Warners Bay. He wants to know, Damon, if you'd be good enough to answer this question for us, what should I do with the builder's supplies when the builder, sorry, I'll read it again. What should I do when the builder supplies their own property inspection? That's Michael from Warners Bay. So they said, the builder's saying, hey, I'm gonna provide our own inspection. What, what can be done in that case? Yeah, um, well, it's purely up to you. You can say, um, I'm going to engage my own independent building inspector. Um, if the the contracts are, are written in Queensland. Um, yeah. Both um, HIA, so the Housing Industry Association, um, the Queensland Building and Construction Commission, um, all of those guys have contracts which um, are used almost every day for construction here in Queensland. And they all say, um, you're encouraged to engage your own independent building inspector. Um, so yeah, look, I, a lot of clients who ring me and ask me that question um, will ring me back two weeks before and say, Oh, the builder's got his own inspector coming along. Um, we don't need you, and that's yeah. fine if that's what you choose to do. I can't talk you out of that. Um, but it's it's a decision of your own. You can just yeah. say, "Well, that's how independent will it be?" Um, and I want my own set of eyes to look at it. Righty, yeah. All right. Well, let's look at the next question then. Um, so, okay, it's from a cost side. This is a question I was going to ask before, so I'm glad that Charles from Maitland asked this question. Can the size of the property affect the cost of your inspection? So I've got For a five-bedroom no, house. Five-bedroom yeah. house or I've got a one-bedroom apartment? Um, no, our, our fees um, are a fixed fee. Oh, okay. Um, it'd, be, it'd be nice if I won on a lot and only lost on a few, um, but... Believe it or not, we quite often find the smaller they are, the longer they take. Um, oh, right. There's just as much for us to inspect and look at. Um, so no, there is no no significant difference. If we show it up to do, uh, it would depend on the type of inspection. Um, if we're engaged to do a pre-purchase inspection, um, the standards in a, in, um, that we use for doing those restrict us to within 30 metres of, of, the, of the building itself. Let's say mm. there's three buildings on the property. Mm. Do you want three reports or just one on one building? Um, yeah. If I'm going to spend an hour and a half or two hours on one building, um, yes. If I'm going to spend an hour and a half or two hours on each other building on the site, um, it will um, indeed cost you more. Um, yeah. At the same time, though, at a discounted rate. So, for example, um, duplexes, triplexes, quadplexes. Um, there's the initial fee for the first one, um, and then we do a 40% um, reduction on each one after that on the same site. We're there. Um, we're not as if we're driving away and coming back. Um, we'd certainly insist that all the follow-up inspections are done at the same time. Yeah, um, yeah. And just to ensure that we can quickly move through and deliver a product. But, yeah, that's the only time our fees will change if there's more than one building. All right. Well, I think we've got time for just one more question. And this is from Anon, from Morpeth. 
Who generally orders the report, a seller or a buyer? Um, if you were selling a house and you wanted to have a, a report done, it would be the seller. Um, in every instance of a purchaser purchasing a house, um, it is the purchaser's responsibility to find their own building inspector. Um, that said, there's a hell of a lot of agents out there that say, I know a bloke yeah, um, yeah. who will come and take care of it for you. But then again, the complete independence is gone. Yeah. Um, so yeah, look, if, if you're selling your property and you want to have an independent inspector done, it, it's, you do that, you find that, that person. Um, and likewise, if you're, if you're buying, you're doing the same thing. Um, mm. Yeah. No drama. Well, we I might hope just... that answers that question. Yeah, no, that was a good answer, mate. Really good answer. They've all been great answers. Um, Damien, you've, you've been uh, terrific tonight, and I'm sure that everybody got a lot of value out of tonight. And uh, guys and girls out there, if you've got other questions, then feel free to send them in to us, and we're only too happy to help them, help you. Um, or you can give us a call or send us an email either or. Um, so what, what uh, until next time, we've got about three weeks before our next one, um, which is going to be talking about insurance, which goes a lot along the lines of um, the property inspections, but more from a, when things go wrong. And the which that's going to be on the 10th of June. So that's in about three weeks' time. But uh, from everybody here at Property Investment Advisory, thank you very much. And thank you very much, Damien, for your, your precious time um, spent with us tonight and uh, from zooming in from Queensland um, and for your you and your future. Thank you very much, mate, and we'll be talking in the near future. Thanks very much, mate. Thank you, thank you very much, Roger, and thank you very much to your listeners and your questions and, uh, and um, the best of luck to everybody. No worries, buddy. Look after yourself and to everybody out there. Thank you very much. And we'll see you in about three weeks' time.